Today is December 30th, and it is the last Talking Yanks of the decade. Dellen Batansis is going cross city. Chance Adams is going to Kansas City. And Kratzy the Kid is coming back to the Bronx or Scranton, whatever you want to call it. And the intro song won't play. There it is. Let's do it. Let's talk Yanks. What's going on, everybody? Welcome to Talking Yanks. My name is John Boy. I'm coming to you from New York City, the Big Apple, and I have my co-host Jake wearing a bucket hat coming to you from Denver. A lot of V's. Denver is the uh, cantaloupe state. Oh, got caught in a moment there. Yeah, we are... Playing scared, coach. Uh, We just wrestled the internet for a while. Uh, After we came in pretty hot. I mean, we were doing end of the decade stuff, end of the year stuff. And now uh, I'm in one of those modes where I'm petrified to touch anything on my computer. So I won't. So any stat you hear from me will either be completely made up or one of my weird Rain Man stats. What was was Hap's ERA in September in 2018? Uh, two. I keep forgetting if it was two six nine or two seven. Uh, that was um, your rain. That was one of your rain mans for a while. Yeah. Now, like my own idiot brain is blocking myself trying to throw the six nine in there, or it could be right, and I'm not confident in my own brain enough. Uh, had a great September last year. September hap. Been saying things about hap in the internet that I might have to delete soon. What have you been saying? I'm just saying, like, there's a chance he could be a really solid dude for us next year and the internet has obviously moved on from that because hap is the least sexy person ever and people want him traded but like there's a world where the juice ball isn't back next year and hap is like a really solid fifth starter uh his second half with the yankees in 2018 after trade era 2.81 no september we need september that was the question I always think it was the full half, and I said September by accident. His September ERA was 1.86. Damn, Happer. (laughs) His five games. He's incredible. (laughs) He may get traded. Tune in. Anyway, on on the first take, and the patrons know, but I actually don't remember if I said this. I hope everyone had a wonderful holiday, enjoyed your Hanukkah, enjoyed your Christmas, enjoyed whatever you celebrate. Maybe you don't celebrate the thing, but you take the time to relax and do you, and I hope you enjoyed (laughs) that wow it felt like it's been a while since we've talked some yanks not a lot has happened the the coal thing was the nuke and we're fizzling out but some things are happening some things jake and we have some interviews i think we're just gonna do this as a full episode and then release an interview as a dual release to end the year later on so we got some stuff to talk about jake's wearing a bucket hat i have some people to thank first jake do you mind sure this episode is brought to you in part by Justin Yates, Sam Thompson, Cassidy Harpster, Nicholas Monaco. Oh, wrong list, wrong list, wrong list. Wrong those, list. Those guys, got, those guys got fake shout outs. Chris Petrolesi, Brandon Edwards, Justin Yates, Chris Cooper, Sean Massa, Sean Masahiro, Daniel Evans, Rob O'Neill, Rich, Jordan Funk. Uh, J Funk, Chris Ferry, Jesus Montero. That's close to Jesus Montero. Michael Tal, David Leftkin, Michael Morgan, Danny Condon, not Condom, Condon, Condon, Eric Lozano, Rich Descote, Descote, Rich Descote. And Clarence Reyes. Those are our most recent patrons. Thank you to them for supporting us. We appreciate you very much. 
A lot of friends of the family there. A lot of slaughtered names. A lot of slaughtered names. No, I did a great job on all of them. I'm sure Condon Condom has never, they've never heard that joke in their life. I think they have probably. A lot. Oh, yeah, you're right. You're right. Yeah, so. What was your best Christmas gift? What's your New Year's resolution? What was your best part of this decade? Oh, wow. Okay. Best Christmas gift was um, I got a pair of those jeans that are like stretchy material jeans, the Mowgli's. Or oh, nice. Mowgli's. That's Mo- what I wore all last year before I ripped them. Yeah, I'm excited about those. They don't fit, though, so I got to get the right size. Too tight? Too loose. Oh, nice. I've already started my move to the city lose weight program. Yeah, you losing weight? Yeah. Well, I haven't gotten a scale yet, but the pants don't fit anymore, so that's something. Okay, that's good. Yeah. Over the holidays? Yeah. That's yeah. a whole crock of shit. I am down a size. How about that? Proud of you. In your face. Um, my New Year's resolution is... That brand runs big, by the way. They run two sizes big, so you're actually up one size. <laughs> Holy shit, this is terrible. Yeah, <laughs> yeah Katie, bad news. Ka- oh, my God. That's brutal. Uh, my New Year's resolution is to not do meth. Same as last year. And that's about it. I forget your last question. Maybe you'll get it this year. Uh, it's the best part of your decade, I guess. Oh, it was when uh, you and I uh, crossed streams in college that one time. Wow. Um, yeah. And I thought I was rude to F- nephew Ike when I didn't congratulate him during the holidays, but you'll take that. Um, good. I'm excited for your next decade. Thank you, Jake. No problem. 30 to 40. A lot can happen. Yeah, right? Yeah, it's crazy. How was your Christmas? It's good, man. It's uh it's been a crazy little month, month and a half between uh winter meetings. We went to LA. Uh we're trying to sneak in Colorado stuff before we move back to the Beast Coast. Um so I've been on a couple of ski things, went skiing today. Oh, uh, good. A lot of chill, and then like also periods of not chill. How about that? It's going to be crazy. Speaking of L.A., we can make the announcement here. If we have any people in L.A. that listen to Talking Yanks, Monday the... Jake, what is it? The 13th? I believe it's the 13th. Monday the 13th, we're probably going to record a live show from a bar in Santa Monica, a live Talking Baseball show, not Talking Yanks. We'll talk Yanks. With yeah, this tr- with- is like an announcement of before the announcement you're just excited yeah i'm excited it's cool we have a lot we don't necessarily have a time or a place but we have an idea and a lot of heart so we're excited we'll have a time and a place in 12 hours it'll be locked in um boom jake if you think that the travel is like it's only going to get crazier for you i know you're gone like two weeks of january then a good amount of february yep (laughs) <laughs> getting my teeth pulled out too, Thursday too oh yeah Jake's getting his wisdom teeth pulled out and those will yeah. be the last his last two pieces of his body that have any smarts gone yeah a lot of those jokes around the past couple of days yeah oh you're gonna be dumb now I didn't know you had any wisdom to lose I didn't honestly that's not a joke right well okay Okay, cool, 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 cool. But Tansis went to the Mets, Jake. Yeah. You were saddened by this? I am not. Um, I am happy for Dylan Batances, and I'm happy for the Mets. Um, you know, we've done a lot here and on Talking Baseball and Free Agency, and everyone likes to point to the 1%, the Madison Bumgarners that signed because they have horses somewhere. Dylan Batances really wanted to stay in New York City. Um, the Yankees who have kind of been an open book the past couple years, like we need to stop (laughs) pretending like they're playing things coy. Like they basically said the whole time they weren't in on Dellen and they never were. Luckily there's that other team that plays in Queens that is desperate for bullpen help. And they also had one of their star players (laughs) agree to, uh, not get paid almost $24 million because he stepped in a hole, which opened up a little bit of the budget. So I'm happy for Dylan, man. He's he's going to stay in New York. Um, and like I, 
I've been I spent one day trying to do it, but like I'm done with Yankees Mets stuff. Like I I kind of root for the Mets. They're a New York team. The the four games we play them during the regular season, I'll root for the Yankees, but like there's no rivalry. We've met in one World Series 20 years ago. I don't understand Yankees fans that hate the Mets. I I fully understand Mets fans that hate the Yankees. Like the Yankees won in your backyard nonstop. That's annoying and their fans are pretty obnoxious. Uh, sure. But like, you know, that little brother trope is true. I, I think of them as my little brother and I'm excited right. for them whenever they do well. So I understand how, why that's kind of condescending and, and Mets right. fans don't like it. But sure, I think he's going to look ugly in a Mets uniform. Ooh, that's interesting. Yeah, a couple of the weird Mets, like the throwback oh, yeah. Mets uni, he's not going to look good. Or the alternatives like that are like yeah. one color. Like white and gray kind of really helped big old Dylan out. Yeah, the pinstripes. Well, hey, maybe the pinstripes made him look even longer than than he is in real life. Maybe he'll come back to earth a little bit. But no, I'm I, I'm happy for Dylan and the Mets again. Like the the timing of the free agency with his injury and uh, how free agency and everything that's wrong with it in baseball right now seemed like a nightmare. But I think he's got an option on it if if he does well and. Hey, he's he's got a year to go out there, figure it out, and ho- hopefully get that giant free agency payday this year or the next year if they pick up the option. I guess. I think it's two options. I think it can turn into a three-year deal, which is crazy. It's cool. He's a New York kid. He grew up in Manhattan. He's in the Bronx, and he stays local. So that's like I like that for him and his family. Yeah. And that that was that's what I started with with the free agency like he really wanted to stay here and we were all curious about who would pony up for Dellen because I mean you run enough risk reward on it I mean there's a chance this dude could be an absolute stud for you um there's a chance he's also hurt and weird and stuff like that but I don't know I think Yankee fans at, at least online started talking themselves into Dellen like hey we got Cole Gardy's coming back bring back Dellen huh I, I but the la- Yankees front office never gave that hint at all it was like with Robertson last year it was like we were like well they're gonna bring d right. back right and then the Yankees like didn't even like offer a thing we went to winter meetings and i think it was jack curry sat down with us no it was michael k and he was like yeah the the yankees don't they have no interest in bringing d-rob back and we're like what yeah i think i don't know the injury reasons there do you think this is going to be a pedro feliciano type deal do you remember that he just oh i mean the famous pedro feliciano deal of 07 2011 Um, 11 sorry i messed up the years i graduated um I think uh, I liked your theory of that Dellen just goes back rehabs. They don't pick up his option. And then he comes back to the Yankees. That's the Pedro Feliciano. So yeah. the he, Pedro Feliciano was the most durable pitcher in MLB for three years. He, he, he made 90 appearances for the Mets in 2010, something like that. Yeah. After making 90 the year before. So the Yankees gave him a two year, $8 million contract. He got hurt in spring training. Never pitched for the Yankees ever and then the Mets signed him to a minor league deal after that smart that rehab money um <laughs> you, what, what do you what do you know about most relief appearances in a year John Boy Media check it out um yeah, Mike Marshall but uh yeah no happy for Dellen and it, if you're a Yankee fan anyone we don't sign just tell yourself oh you know what we signed Garrett Cole yeah Oh, I said as soon as Cole signed, if Gardy's the only other move, sure, great. Right. I, 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 whoever else is on your wish list pales in comparison uh, to that formerly bearded, flowing hair gentleman that now anchors our rotation. So it it sucks. I mean, but again, like if, if you're like- for some reason like Dellen's at the Mets, I'm not rooting for that guy. Like get get away from me. Did you know that? Did, who t- who texted us? But Badger from Breaking Bad sounds just like Garrett Cole. Garrett Cole. I think that was Hoke? rhymes with Coke. Do you want to play it for everyone that doesn't know? Sure. Here's Badger. Yo, for real. This is all you. And then here's Hoke. Yo, for real. This is all you. Garrett Cole, not Brian Hoke. Um, but yeah, no, that was great stuff. <laughs> <laughs> He does sound like Badger a lot. 
some people's brains are going to be opened when next time they hear Cole talk and be like, oh my God, it does sound like Badger from Breaking Bad. Really weird voice. Jake, we have some some rumors uh, that I don't care about, but first... Ooh, perfect. That's, so stay tuned for that. But the Yankees did make some other moves. They traded Chance Adams to the Royals for Christian Perez, who's like a really young prospect. They just I needed... I can't believe we got him. 20 years old. Uh, he is in uh, rookie ball. No, he's in A ball. And Didn't he like never hit a minor league homer or something like that? Um. Yes. No. 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 Yeah, he's hit four. He didn't hit a home okay. run last year in 2019. Oh, last year. He had 98. That was a rebuilding hit. year. He had 98 hits though. I mean, by he, the he, way, he, also rooting for Chance Adams. He. Uh. Sure. He had a 285 slugging percentage in 2019. A ball. So. Yeah. Christian Perez, come on down. Damn, Chance Adams' value is nothing. That's, uh, I mean, that's, I'm, su- I'm surprised we got Christian Perez. Um, yeah, I thought he was just going to get waived. So I, I, actually, I will say this. I did get myself excited for the Matt Blake, Chance Adams exper- experience and experiment. Well, um, they, but they asked, alas. They asked Matt Blake. They were like, hey, we have to make some room on the 40 man. Do you have any interest in kind of retooling what Chance has to offer? And Matt Blake said... What does Chance Adams have to offer? That plus plus curveball, Jim. That one plus plus curveball running. All right. But Matt Blake, Matt Blake did say, "Oh, if we can get Perez from them, punch yeah. it." <laughs> I'm gonna turn that. That dude's a. He's a. <laughs> this is how advanced Matt Blake is. Christian Perez is going to be a classic shortstop turned pitcher story. <laughs> yeah, I, Matt, I was, <laughs> Matt Blake has more <laughs> sees more future. No. Christian Perez on the mound. Chance Adam. Chance is a nice guy. I'm I'm uh, done. It, we went it too didn't far. work out. He'll go to Kansas City. He'll throw 160 innings and he'll put up Dylan Bundy esque type numbers. I don't think he can even do that. But Christian Perez, thank you. Uh, thank Excited you. Excited to I mean. see him. His last, middle name is Hernan. Ooh. The Yankees also signed free agent catcher Eric Kratz. The Kratzy kid. The Mennonite masher. Now, when we were at winter meetings, we were talking about Brian Hoke, and we were saying how Higashioka is an itch they want to scratch. I say that every episode. Right. But Higgy's out of options, so you can't send him down. And what are you going to do then if he gets hot? You, you need other guys. And I said, well, they just bring back Kratz. And if Hulk you're was- Higgy, you give a big exhale. Because, I mean, Higgy was wondering if they were going to bring in another dude and then maybe that might be the end of his time in New York. Um, I think Kratz, Yankees, Higgy, Gary, they've got a nice little situation there where Kratzter's like, hey, I will play triple-A ball. If you need me, give me the call. If another team comes calling, I'm fine going there. And that's yeah. just the deal. Yep. So 39-year-old catcher, Eric Kratz. He has a 1,000, 1.000 batting average as a Yankee. Yeah. Two for two, two RBIs. Just a killer. He did fairly well on the Brewers in 2018 not really like stats wise not really but he was a part of that run yeah he was he was involved I like having him around in the minor leagues I thought they traded him too early last year don't you remember me saying that vaguely and I think it was also because didn't we or was that two years ago no it was, la- it was last year when Gary got hurt again and I was like well now you have Romine and Higgy and that's all I bet you wish you right. still had Kratz there, but Romine and Higgy carried the weight very well, so it didn't matter. Monsters. Monsters. So that's the news. And then there's the here's the rumors, Jake. You ready for the rumors? Want me to make the rumor soundtrack? Yeah, noise? play the rumor sound effect. Okay. Um, and here it is. And Nice. Now everyone knows that's the cue for the rumors, and we've rumors. We've, we've prepped them for that. The Yankees are still interested in Kyle Schwarber. 
per Ken Rosenthal. Think so? That's what Ken Rosenthal is saying. Ken Rosenthal writes that the Yankees' years-long interest in Cubs outfielder Kyle Schwarber has continued. Nevertheless, there's no momentum toward a deal as of now. Um, no, I don't really think so. But I trust Rosenthal. Maybe if they like if if they do have an Andujar trade up up their sleeve, then like they like if they need a a bad defending bat, they like the lefty Schwarber over the righty Andujar. I think Joe's has talked himself onto the the Schwarber train. Our guy Joe's McFly. Um, but again, I think it's I think it's all smoke and mirrors, man. I mean, like, why would? Because if Schwarber comes, that's the end of Andujar, right? Yeah, I think there's 0.5% chance Schwarber comes. And, like, I, I just don't get the appeal unless it's a three-way trade, which would end up being one of the more hilarious three-way trades because there's two dudes who can rake but just can't play defense. Um, yeah, I, I don't know. I mean, it's a really fun idea. I mean, Schwarber hit 38 Yabos last year, and, I mean, you start doing the math with a lefty at Yankee Stadium, which everyone loves. Uh, his OPS has gotten better the past three seasons. Um, he's got he's great against righties, and that's kind of what everyone in this Yankees fan base wants, and you either say it to a douchey degree or you say it in a casual degree. I'm in the casual degree. It's like, those Yankees dynasty teams, they were crazy balanced. Uh, my guy Bernie was in there, Tino, Paulio, Jeter. I mean, they went lefty, righty, switch, lefty, righty, switch. And it was just a nice feature on that team. Now, as we did with Sharp Stats earlier this year, miss you, KT Sharp. Happy holidays. We got to get some Sharp Stats rolling soon. We need a call episode. But it would there is just something, and it, maybe it's a baseball traditionalist thing, that I don't know if Schwarbo could break up some of those righties, uh, you know, on a certain night and make the lineup a little more balanced. Because right now you're looking at the projected lineups and you got Brett Gardner as the only lefty. And where do you put him in the lineup? It starts getting tricky. Um, so I don't know. I, I get the appeal. And if Kyle Schwarber ends up being a Yankee, I'm probably going to be the first guy in front of a mic saying, yeah, 45 bombs. Yeah, well, um, 20 intentional walks. So, I mean, think about that. <laughs> Are you thinking about the walks? Extrapolate that. You know? <laughs> that was in 2018. <laughs> okay, that was 2018. You only had uh, you only had 5 last year. That's ooh, crazy. So that's tr that's a little troublesome. That's a little um, troublesome, yeah. Yeah, that's a little No, I I mean I the the logistics don't make sense. If it somehow happens where there's the three-way trade and Uhar goes to the Rangers, Schwarber comes to the Yankees and the Cubs get blah. Um, sure. I'm gl I hope everyone's happy and it would, it would be nice to see another lefty in there from time to time. Well, speaking of Yankees and Miguel Andujar, Yankees general manager, Ryan Cashman and manager Aaron Boone both said Friday that they expect third baseman Miguel Andujar to be ready for spring training. That's good news. So, huge. I didn't know that that needed to be announced. I guess he is coming off injury. Just getting the other teams excited. I, they're, they're, he's good. He's good to go. I think uh, the, the only good thing Brian Hoax ever told me okay. um, was about Miguel Andujar playing left field in spring training with the emphasis on that doesn't mean he'll play left field for the New York Yankees. <laughs> and I think that's very important. Oh, um, you think they're going to trade him like Philip Deal right at the deadline? Well, Are you cementing that? A uh, Jake cement? Let's not talk too much about Philip Deal and my Colorado Rockies. Um, but no, I think it, it, in the Andujar world... I mean, third base after we all saw Oshella last year. I mean, you can't go back. Did you just call him you know, Oshella. You, you wonder if he could, if he can do the first base thing. I mean, he wasn't terrible at picking it, but you and I have imagined that sidearm double play throw from first to second base just going to Monument Park. Um, I mean, there's, <laughs> yeah. there's, there's a little bit of. 
Imagine the guy if he could... just fucking flung one over the short porch. Oh my oh. god! I mean, the angle he throws at it could get it could get to the monuments. But um, Miguel Andujar, and this is a conversation we did so much last year. And again, Brian Hoke kind of turned a light bulb on for me for once. Brian Hoke turned me on. Um, is that Miguel Andujar will not be a left fielder for the New York Yankees for an extended period of time. <laughs> They've had Brett Gardner for a decade for a reason. Well, the depth could Miguel of- Andujar could Miguel Andujar catch a fly ball and potentially play an easier left field for eighty-one games? I could see that world. So I think spring training is going to be a fun, fun experimentation with Miggy. Give me your left fielder depth chart. Ooh, Yankees left fielder depth chart. Well, Jim, you've actually crossed this into kind of a controversial topic because the number one is scary because it's either Stan or Talkman, depending or, who's your DH. Yeah. Yes. Okay. So that's okay. your that's your one two. Stan Stanton one Talkman two. Yep. I'm assuming Guardy doesn't count because we have him in center. Sure. But he's in there. Okay. Well, that just got tricky. Um. Hicks is uh, Hicks, Hicks. Tyler Wade. Hicks is healthy. Tyler Wade. Yeah. Um, Clint Frazier. Okay. Miguel Andar. I have Schwarber ahead of Clint. And then give me like, is McBroom still on the team? No, I think we traded the Brooms. No, he's on the Royals, right? He made it to the Bigs. I'm gonna the- miss him. <laughs> who's who's oh this is a fun game who are some of the classic spring training names zach zenner no is he gonna be around it's zenner and that dude who's got a long name like like albert in every spring training game yeah like it's burger something oh mcbergy ambergy 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 well how did he do because love he, the spring training guys. He gets he gets so much play in spring training. Trey Ambergy, okay, he's twenty nine years old. Psych. He wears number twenty nine. He's twenty five years old. In two thousand nineteen, hey, he got some. He got a lot of time in AAA. Good for you, Ambergy. Twenty two twenty two homers in AAA in two thousand nineteen. Better than me. Eight twenty two OPS. Good shit, Trey. Uh 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 Trey. So oh, yeah. His Left Twitter field. bio is unashamed. Yeah, he's ahead of Anduar. Do wow. you have do you have Tyro Estrada ahead of Anduar? I always have Tyro ahead of everyone. Are you worried that they don't like Tyro? No. Are you kidding me? Okay. Tyro might be our backup shortstop. Did you did we break the news about Gary on here yet? Uh, well, at least break the news with the breaking news sound clip you always play. Yeah, and we should. You're right. You're right. You're right. Breaking news. Ooh. They, uh, Yankees might drop Gary down to one knee this year. I did hear that. I did hear that was part of, uh, the catching coaches ting. That's honestly, I mean, for so many people that don't care, but a lot of people are gonna be like, Ooh, Interesting. So Mitch Garver started like propping himself up on one knee, not like the crouch right. position. And we were told that they may try to introduce that to Gary to help out his defensive uh, maneuvering and framing and receiving. So this just in, we broke it. The Yankees may drop Gary down to a knee while catching this just in. What's the thought process there? Just that, like, you're more stable instead of, like, balancing on two legs, you're planted? Yeah, maybe because Gary's a huge dude, so crouching kind of just sucks. Oh, yeah, dude. He's going to, oh, he's going to come into camp again. Uh, all, all, oh, Gary. Oh, look at, oh, those biceps on a catcher, that's not going to work, man. I think it'll work, Jake. Oh, what are you, a perfectly fit young man? <laughs> Gary's in good shape. It's in really good shape. I also heard they might have him hit with the shin protector still on. No, you didn't hear that. I heard that from somewhere. You might have heard that though. I was on the subway the other day, and this lady was just screaming. And I thought I heard her say that. 
You were that lady on the subway screaming. <laughs> They're dropping Gary to one knee. <laughs> <laughs> I'm or, I might do some crazy subway stuff. People like always say the subway's crazy in New York, and you're like, ah, oh, people from New York overplay it, and then you go on the subway for three days in a row, and you're like, no, they're not overplaying it. No. It's mayhem. People. People. Jake, do you have anything else? Oh, you did some Twitter questions. Dude, a lot of people responded. I was like, guys, guys, what am I, some sort of... 15k followers on Twitter. 48 people responded. Pretty good. All right. So Jake said, about to record an episode of Talking Yanks. Any questions? Let's pull some questions from Twitter. This one from our good friend Emmy G. Yeah. What position does DJ LeMay spend the most time at in 2020? I think this is a good question. I think my answer is second base. With DD gone, I think it's second base. Yeah, second base has to be the heavy favorite with Unless first base second. First base second because Tyler Wade finally comes to play. Oh. Steal second base from Voight, who was at first but is struggling. Oh, DJ I thought you were going to say over. Tyler Wade. I thought you were going to say Tyler Wade was going to win shortstop from Glaber. No, Glaber's the shortstop of the future. Move Glaber to second for Tyler Wade. Nope, not happening. Uh, there's probably someone online that said that, right? Neither is Tyler Wade be getting the starting second baseman job. He's uh, so good. Unless injury. I mean, if Voight does get hurt, DJ moves over there and you have Wade or Estrada fill in in the middle infield, right? Mike Ford. What happened to him? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> He's deserved as much of a shot as Voight. <laughs> no. I, can I Can I dive into Mike Ford's numbers? Because I think... I, I sure. know he was good, but I think Yankee fans are putting like more stock in it because because everyone's it's a small sample size, but the stock's decent, man. It's it's Voight level. And is it, though? That's where I, that's what I want to know. Is it comparable to what Voight did at the end of 18? So you want to have some fun again? I'm scared to touch anything on my computer. I mean, I, I, if I had to guess Ford's OPS ended up in the mid eights last year. 909. <laughs> See? But, <sighs> like, it, uh, there is a fluky part to it in that, like, his role on the team was done, and we were like, hey, thanks, Mike Ford. And then he got a couple pinch hit at bats, and he just hit home runs. And it's like, okay, that's almost, that's a foul. Two fouls. Voight's um, OPS, Voight's OPS after 2018 was 1.069. In 161 plate appearances, Ford had 163 plate appearances. So we're talking very similar right. uh, uh, sample size. And Voight was still, let's see. Voight was still, okay. I, I feel satisfied. Voight's 2018 was way better than Ford's 2019. Right, but we knew Voight was playing out of his head to a degree. I mean, Voight went full nut job for a while. That's what I'm saying. We knew Voight, Voight, we knew Voight was going to come down a little bit, but it looked like the real deal. If we expect Ford to come down a little bit, we're not looking at like a guy who's going to be the guy. But I mean, Ford never had a nut job, nut job streak like Voight had. Um, did he not? I guess not. It's all the home runs are really spread out. There's one week here where he kind of went off. I, I, I'm not trying to downplay Ford. I, I'm just trying to level out. I think people are up playing him too much. Voight is still much more deserving of the first baseman job. Like, but not, but think about what you said that we were talking about Tyler Wade jumping in because of injury. If Luke Voigt gets hurt, the next person in is is Mike Ford. Yes, unless there's unless there's balancing of the roster type situations and 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 Wade is already the 26th man or and stuff like that. But yeah, if it's a significant energy, it's definitely injury, it's definitely Ford. Can I tell you Luke Voigt's same sample size? Voigt had a 322 batting average, 398 on base percentage, 1.69 OPS. Same sample size. Yeah. Ford is 259, 350, 909. So it's still very good, but I I found that I see people talking about Ford's 2019 in the same manner we talked about Voight's 2018, and they're two different things. 
Not really. I think you're you're being a little too dramatic about it. I mean, Voight we Voight we knew went out of his skull for a while. Voight was playing a level of baseball that even Luke Voight could admit he couldn't continue playing. We we still didn't know where that landed. We thought it was a good baseball player. Mike Ford was just kind of Mike Ford around. He had a good eye. He had a little bit of pop. Um, it came together for a couple weeks, but it was never like. I mean, Voight was an insane person for a while. That's what I'm saying. You're saying the same thing I'm saying. Yeah. Voight was an insane person. Ford was good. Ford's the backup. There's people right. out there saying that. But they you, wa- ne- you never believed that Luke Voight was a one dot OPS player. No, but we believe that he was above eight. Yeah. And there's a chance that Ford can be too. Yeah. That's all I'm saying. What I'm countering is the people I see saying that Ford should be it should be a battle in spring training and whoever wins it wins it. I disagree. I think it's Voits. Right. And they Boone came out with the quote and they said it was Voits and I that was something I was interested in coming into the offseason because I I thought that was something the Yankees could have danced with if they wanted to. Like they could have done a hey, well, you know, Luke's been great for us, but we want to see what Forty's got coming into the year. And no, they gave it to Voit and rightfully so. I mean, the other part of this conversation that we <laughs> are now walking all over ourselves in different ways is Voit has been underrated. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. You took a picture of me and put it on Twitter. Come on. That's part of this thread. All right, next question from Jake's thread on Twitter. Over, under, Yankees predictions for the decade. God damn it, Matt Siegel. I'm not doing that. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) It's a good cue. It's a good cue. Top five moments from the 2019 season from San Gergrazzi. My brain doesn't even... Can't do that. DJ's game-tying home run is number one. If you, like, stop the moment right there. Just an isolated Mm. moment. It's probably number one. Hicks is catch. Number two. Know what's so funny? If it was anyone else besides DJ LeMayhew, they'd be walking around all offseason. Like, whenever they go to a bar or wherever they're at, they're like, yeah, I mean, I hit that home run. That was pretty big. Like, DJ LeMayhew. Doesn't care. Has, hasn't, DJ LeMayhew has not mentioned the homer since it's happened. It didn't matter. No. One of the better at-bats. Fantastic result. Um, yeah. Damn. You got any top moments? CC leaving it all on the field was pretty cool for like a bad moment, but a cool moment. Yeah, I mean, any CC Amber Margie moments, um, I mean, took a lot out of me. Um, just the whole thing that was Gio Urshela. The Mike Talkman catch, I saw that leak out on the internet the other day. That was pretty nuts, man. Yeah, that was a crazy catch. <laughs> that was awesome. I think the the Hicks the when we were down in Tropicana and Hicks hit that pinch hit home run then too, that was cool. But pinch the hit home runs. Only are, other moment. I mean, this is a slippery slope because you and I could remember <laughs> moments from basically 150 games. Dude, no, it jumped out. What about that Tampa Bay game that Tanaka just shut them down in like in a rude way? Yeah, I love it's Tanaka. Like, you uh, you guys don't deserve to be on the same land as me. That's that was the moment they knew they were going to lose forever. That was awesome. Yeah. Will you guys be going to Yankee games this season where your fans can join from Eric? Yeah, we did two events. One got rained out and then one didn't last year. <clears throat> we plan on having more events this year. It all depends if people want to go and show up and hang out with us. Uh, it'll be a little easier since I live in New York now and Jake's moving here for next season. So we do plan on having more events. Show up, come, hang out. I'll be in the city, um, and before every game, uh, similar to Quidditch, uh, where they release the golden snitch, I'm going to release Noodle around the stadium, and whoever catches him gets a free T-shirt. Great. But sometimes that might not happen. What if Noodle doesn't get caught? Uh, The snitch wins. Okay. Everyone everyone at the game has to give me a shirt. (laughs) And you have to wear all of them at once, like Joey and Friends. Oh, yeah, that's 40,000 shirts. We'll talk about it. That was a brainstorm. And then we roll you down the stairs. And we donate it. Yeah. Violet, you're turning violet, Violet. Okay. Uh, Who is the opening day third baseman? Giovanni Urshela. Yep. 
Do you see any under the radar moves the Yankees can make to improve in 2020? But before the season starts, under the radar move, I think would would just be like them trying to find the next Gio Urshela that's an infielder. Like if they think we can up, we can upgrade from Tyro or Wade as the backup shortstop. They currently Tyler uh, Wade and Tyro are the backup shortstops, and I can see them fishing for a Talkman Geo Voight esque guy. All like they're sending out their bat signal. Scour the minor leagues. How much? How much does that suck for the next triple triple A guy that comes in? Like, oh, hey, kind of the standard now is like Luke Voigt should have been an all-star. Gio Urshela was the best player ever. Mike Talkman was MVP for a month and a half. So just be ready. Now, nah, Bravik already did that for us. Yeah, Vicky V leveled things out. Yeah. Um, but, dude, how much would it suck if they do do a move like that and Wade gets got again at the end? I mean, you almost can't. <laughs> you almost can't. Like, I know... <laughs> You know, the baseball comes first, but I mean, if Cashman <laughs> traded for a dude the day before opening day <laughs> to kick Tyler Wade off the roster, like, no, there's no coming back from that. Yeah, that sucks. Uh, okay. Do you see any other under the radar moves? Like maybe a reliever? I think the reliever thing's been out there, but I mean, we haven't heard anything, right? Like, I, and it's not like we don't have arms. A I lot guess of, the only other rumor that's that's been kind of serious is Hater, but again, I I don't know how that goes down. Honest, honest answer. We'll both do it on three. What percentage of the Hater rumors with the Yankees do you think is serious? One, two, three, zero. Two. Okay. Derek Jeter. Derek Jeter. That's always a good answer. We used to microwave everything in my house. Different numbers of two. Like, if you were just putting cheese on nachos, it was 22 seconds. Um, it was always inter- intervals of two. You don't use the 30-second button? No, bro. That's all I use. Have you seen how I operate? That's the Technology tries to give you easy things, and you're like, nah, nah. No, thank you. Bookmarks, I'll just leave the tabs open. <laughs> I'm the Larry Rothschild of, of technology. I probably only hit one button on the microwave. And it's the 30 second button. So everything gets intervals of 30 seconds. I love the microwave. What an invention. How does Garrett Cole fit into the theoretical Yankees team barbecue party from your previous podcast? Step? I, did, I thought that was a real question. And then it went, okay. So if you didn't listen to Talking Yanks last season, someone asked us yeah. uh, to, to draw out what the Yankees barbecue looks like. We had some good stuff. We ran it. I think we talked about it with Hoke a little bit, right? Hoke or Adler. But I don't know if that was on air or not. Everything runs together. Right. Uh, Cole is, is he with DJ playing games, just intensely playing like all the yard games? Yeah, Cole's playing game. Every game Cole goes to ends. <laughs> yeah, they're like, uh, like dude, he, we weren't that intense. He just gets intense. a little, like, oh, you know, they no, need one no, cornhole no. shot. Besides DJ, and DJ, you'd never know he's getting upset. And then when the last point hits... And Cole wins. DJ just like yells out like a mutter, or just like has to. Like, I gotta take a walk. And you're like, whoa! I thought you guys were just casually playing this. And <laughs> turns out Cole and DJ were in a heated battle. I uh, maybe the funniest laugh that I knew was coming in the past couple days is they were doing the the Rachel is leaving episode of Friends, the last episode. Last and episode. She says good. She says goodbye to Joey, and they're like, wow, Joey's taking it really well. <laughs> and then he goes to jump off the ledge. That's just good humor. And that would be DJ LeMahieu playing the games. What is your favorite part of the team? Is it the lineup, the pen, or the depth? That was a fun question, huh? This one, the favorite part of the team? Tom Smith? I guess the rotation, right? I mean, this rotation is some, something we haven't seen in a while, Chan. I like the lineup. My my favorite part of the team is uh, G. Arshella turning double plays from third base. Yeah, that's pretty fun. Remember how awesome the double plays were in the playoffs? They turned a lot of them. Laissez-faire. 
They're not going to have to do that anymore. Yes, they will. Just like Cole, Pax, and Sevy are just going to strike guys out. They're going to be so stoked for Tanaka days. Huge year for Tanaka. The defense is going to be stoked he's out there. They're going to be excited. Yeah. Wow. That's a... Boodaloop. Boodaloop. When is the best time to go to spring training? Good job, Alex Munez. Good question. Jake and I have gone two years in a row. In 2018, we went at the end and saw just some games. And then last year, 2019, we went and we saw the workouts for like three workout days. And then we saw three games. The workouts are spring training. Yeah. I think you have to do what we did and do a couple workouts and a couple games. And I don't want to tell too many people this because the beauty of the workouts is it's so chill and quiet. When you're at the games, you can really only sit in your seat. The place sells out. And like yeah. you're, you don't really watch the game because you're, it's like, well, I'm not invested in who's winning or losing this game. I just want to see when Judge comes up and then Trey Ambergie's coming up at the end. So like the games are cool. I think you have to see some. The workout days, if you're really into the Yankees and you want to be able to just like sit down in whatever seat you want, test out every seat in the stadium, yell to Brian Hoke, yell to the beat reporters, chat with whoever, see Brian Cashman just walking around and intermingling. Like that was so much cooler. If you're a baseball, like you just like watching baseball, like if you've been following the Cespit is BBQ guys and watching Dominican League baseball, like you're one of those sickos, then yeah, you're going to like just watching the game. If you like the personalities and stuff, like you're you're going to see guys and it's really is spring training. Like I there's I was trying to think of ways to put into words, but like I don't know, you could just like sit anywhere. <laughs> like if you want to sit on the ground or something, like that's kind of normal. That's not a great example, but we'll see you there. Who's the most overrated Yankee and who's the most underrated Yankee? Ooh. Right now? Uh, I don't know. William Duncan at William Duncan NY didn't specify. My cop out would be all time. I'd say Derek Jeter for both. And that would be like my bad ESPN answer. And that is be like that's very a, cheeky, Jake. Such a shitty ESPN answer. Right now. Um, I think Pettit's the most God. underrated. Oh, so we are doing all time. No, right now. Oh, my God. Yeah. I don't I don't care about this question. Do you want to do it? Yeah, it's tough. So you have to leave the scope of Yankee Land. Yeah, I mean it's just not fun. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Should we consider acquiring a backup catcher or see what Higgy can do as a major league player full time? Uh I'm I'm I want to see what Higgy can do. So wh why not? It's just a backup role. Like he he can't do that much damage unless uh Gary gets hurt. So maybe they go sign another triple A catcher. Uh, you know, and him and Kratzy split yeah. duties. I don't know who, who our other catching prospects are. I, I think that's the biggest fear, and I think people can be kind of rightfully so in having it, is that, I mean, if, if you want to get into Gary Sanchez, real Mudo type arguments like that, knock yourself off, I'm, I've retired from that. Um, I mean, Gary has a little bit of an injury bug at this point, so I, I think it is kind of okay for fans to be like, Hey, if, if we get 125 out of Gary, that's a win. Um, so filling the rest of those games with Higgy, or if Gary does have a significant injury and it's Higgy and Kratz, I don't know, people are going to be more on edge than they would have been with Romine and Higgy. Okay. I don't, I'm trying to find if we have other catchers. Gary does have an injury bug. Higgy does have no options, I believe. Right. So, but yes. I I want to do Higgy but, as the backup. And I, I think the other thing you can you can calm people down with is that we've seen, well, Maldonado flipped, what, two teams last year? You can get a serviceable catcher at the deadline if you really needed one. Yeah, it's true. At any For time, nothing. Really. <laughs> For nothing. Yeah. Which Yankee do you see as the guy who doesn't say thank you when someone holds the door to them? Good question by Sean Ryan. It's easily DJ LeMahieu, but he does nod. He just doesn't right. verbally say the words thank you. No, I, th I think that's a perfect answer that also keeps... I, I guess Chad Green's in the same boat. Yeah. 
I mean, we can just. Chad Green makes an audible noise, but he doesn't say thank you. Uh, He does like when you go in the elevator and like you say bye to the people, but you're not actually saying bye. You're like, see, like Like Chad Green says. Chad Green says a noise that sounds like thank you. I know he's a former Yankee, but Kutch and his wife just had a second baby from Jess. Congrats, Kutch and his wife. Jake McCutcheon. Do you think Giambi will make a comeback and hit over 350? I'll hang up and listen. Cool. Yeah, it's tough. It's tough because it's so lame. It's to, been done. To be a follower of Ooh, just here we go. dumbness. I don't understand people who, whatever. This is the reaction they want, but it's just dumb. Like, it's just like genuinely pathetic pathetic anyway what are your honest expectations for stanton from rosendo martinez our dude bay area guy we met we met his parents it's tough like stanton we're gonna do the ppps and the mini episodes again and we'll really dive into it there but i i just like last year i expect big things why would you Unless unless you're like a true Debbie Downer and you're like, I expect him to be injured again. You can say that. I think it's fair to say that. He was injured all season and there was weird situations. But if in your head he's healthy and you don't expect a big season, I don't know. That's weird. And for me, the, the Talkman Andujar argument discussion that's going around the internet right now is, I mean, all things considered, Mike Talkman played great, was an incredible defender, um, and let's not forget like that Giancarlo Stanton contract homies got to start DHing a little bit. Um, so yeah, I don't know. Expect good things from Giancarlo Stanton cause he's a guy that's won an MVP in this league. Boom. Uh, did you go to Pomp Rock? And if so, who were your math teachers from, uh, Jeez. Brady? I had Broderick fresh sophomore year. Broderick. Geometry. I had um who's the short lady? Bannon. I think she married Mr. Loiseau. Is that true? Congratulations. Um I had Brock Smith, the J V baseball coach at the time. Yep, I had him too. That's who I um, said. I took Did I not pro- say that? I took Yeah, you said Broderick. Same guy. Um same thing though. Um I took a prop stat class with Miss Jackson. Um she's no no longer there. Got a 41 sem- one semester, but she gave me a C, so I always appreciate that. <laughs> <laughs> That's a big jump. It's a big jump. It was senior year. She just she gave me the look like, hey, <laughs> like I know you're better than this. 41 rounds it up to a C. <laughs> I broadcasted the women's, the girls' volleyball games, and she coached them, so I think she appreciated that a little bit. Uh, do nice things, people. Was she a good coach? I think she was an okay coach. She got in trouble. I think she bought kids booze. Oh, she didn't sleep with them? No, I don't think. There's rumors, but I don't think so. Okay. Well, then there's going to be rumors about how you got that 41 up. Right. Um, I mean, spread the rumors, I guess. Yeah. All right. One last question from the peanut gallery. What's Jake's favorite day of the week? Who asked that? George S. George S. Yeah. At the only George S. Saturday. Cool. Good. Good day, Jake. You? <clears throat> Thursday. Okay. Okay. Are Happ and Frazier still Yankees come February 11th? Big day. That's like pitchers and catchers, I think. Yeah. Do you think they I'm are? I'm going to say yes. I'm going to say yes. I, I I'm going to say both, yes as well. Both of their values are low. Like, that's that's the thing you and I always circle back at is, like, how many times does Cashman trade someone when their value's done? Um, Ch- Chance Adams. Chance Adams. <laughs> but, I, again, we like the return there. Um I, I don't know. Again, I I'll I'll end up doing some J Hap Magna Carta. What words do I say sometimes? But I mean, take away the juice ball. Give me September Hap. 
best fit starter in baseball. I said that with CC last year. I'll say it with Hap this year. All right. That's all. That's all from us for talking Yanks. Enjoy your New Year's Eve. And then, I mean, I guess have a good all of 2020, but that's pretty daunting for me to wish for you. So just start with a good New Year's Eve. Do you have any plans, Jake? Have a good decade. People wanted decade goals from us. I said, oh, I've never set a goal. Decade goals? Yeah. Scary, right? Yeah. Well, all these meetings we've been going to and all this talking about the company we've had to do this off season, it's like everyone's favorite question. What's your goal as a company? And I'm yeah. like, uh, I don't do that because what if I don't attain it? Then it's going to feel like a failure, but it might not have been. How many kids are you going to have by 2030? I mean, I hope. Dude, I hope two or three. Yeah, I think two and a half is the over under. Yeah, I hope three. Yeah. yeah, really do. How many are you going to have? Interested to see. I think for me, the number's dogs. I think two and a half is also the over under. Wow. You're yeah. three dogs. I just see myself fading into that life. Dude, are you not going to be able to walk three dogs at one time? They'll literally be dragging your can't body. Can't walk one. Yeah, they're going to be dragging your one. body down the <laughs> sidewalk. That's part of the fun, man. It's like some stupid 90s like family movie Beethoven scene. Just, Just cutaway <laughs> scene. See <laughs> you getting dragged. It's like Mary Poppins and her, her umbrella just like casually <laughs> floating. Yeah. But it's you. Yeah, okay. That's a good image to end the show on. Thank you guys very much for joining. We uh, will be dropping a, a po- uh, uh, interview after this, and then we'll be back after the new year. See you later. Go Yanks. Tell them, Grams. Go Yankees.